Saginaw, Michigan pioneer, Mr. Lewis Campo. For anyone who has taken a brief look at the history of Saginaw, Michigan, the name Lewis Campo is very familiar. <clears throat> he was a true pioneer of Saginaw, Michigan, having come here first in 1861, even before Fort Saginaw had been built. Lewis Campo was Saginaw's first white settler, and when he arrived, Saginaw was nothing but a swampy, forested wilderness. As his name might suggest, Mr. Campo was of French, French ancestry and was born in Detroit, Michigan in 1791. To say he was ambitious would be an understatement. When he arrived here in 1816, he established a fur trading post. The woods were teeming with valuable fur-bearing animals, which included uh, muskrat, beaver, wolves, and foxes. Now, Louis Campo built a large two-story house and trading post close to uh, where Throp and Niagara Streets are, about seven blocks north of Court Street. It was indeed a sturdy building constructed of, heav of heavy squared logs and was uh, uh, plenty strong enough to serve a, most, uh, a more, a more uh, than adequate safe haven should the Indians become aggressive, which from time to time did happen. Now, he actually got along very well, though, with the Native Americans and had mastered their language. Mr. Campo found the Native Americans at what would become known as Saginaw to be very willing traders, uh, securing from him, uh, securing for him pelts um, in exchange for cooking utensils, calico, knives, boots, and all the and the all important whiskey, aka fire water. He was noted for treating the Native American fairly, and when there was a need, would give them outright food and whatever else they needed. Louis Campo was well known with other white settlers in Michigan and is said to have been good friends with General Louis Cass, who was the governor of the territory of Michigan. Now, Governor Cass was attempting to secure Indian lands from the natives. So as to avoid hostilities um, that could lead to bloodshed, he decided to obtain the land through treaties with the Indians. Now, Governor Cass's plan was to attempt a gathering in one place of all the Chippewa chiefs. And he believed in so doing that he might well be able to secure a large portion of eastern Michigan. His chosen place for the meeting was Saginaw, and since Campo was well established with the Native Americans, there Cass asked him and uh, a few other traders to assemble the chiefs there and keep them peaceable. Now, Campo went uh, so far with the governor's plans as to agree to actually build a council house for the big gathering. From records, we know that the council house was large, a rough shelter near his trading post. For seating, large logs were rolled into place in front of the raised platform. Now, in the summer of 1819, the Indians began arriving, and the forest around the trading post and the council house began to fill up with wigwams. As any good businessman would do, Mr. Campo took advantage of the assembly and extended credit to the Native Americans on the understanding that he would be paid with money from the sale of their lands through the Treaty of Saginaw in 1819. Now, Governor Cass was successful in getting the Chippewa to sell their land, and Louis Campo and his brother, um, Seward, uh, served as... as uh, interpreters. On September 24, 1819, after 12 days of negotiations, 114 Indian chiefs signed the Treaty of Saginaw. The Native Americans were to receive $1,000 a year forever. And per his agreement with the Indians to whom had, he had extended credit, Louis Campo asked that the money owed to him be deducted prior to making the first treaty payment. When it was time for the Indians to uh, count their, their money, Governor Cass suggested to the Native Americans that they pay their indebtedness to Campo, but he made it uh, only a suggestion, not an order. And that suggestion of Governor Cass was a trouble. Another trader, Jacob Smith, was a friend with many of the Indians, and Smith believed that the money paid to Campo would be lost to himself and other traders in the area. There was a chief whose name was Kish Kaka, uh, who had been drunk through most of the negotiations. Uh, Jacob Smith talked to Kish Kakao uh, to talk his friends into not paying up to Campo. And once the Indians backed off paying Mr. Campo, it did not take long for Campo to, con uh, to connect the dots 
as to what had actually transpired. In the very dramatic movement, Kempo led onto the uh, or leapt onto the council house platform and knocked Smith over. And the fight was stopped by Governor Cass and some of the soldiers who were present. Kempo was furious with good reason, not only with rival Jacob Smith, but also with Cass, who he felt was being too tolerant with Smith. But Kempo was not about to take it, and he set his revenge into motion. Kempo opened up ten barrels of whiskey, and he positioned men of, of his beside each barrel with dippers to ladle out the whiskey to the very eagerly awaiting Indians. And believe me, it didn't take long before they were drunk and began shouting out war hoops and brandishing tomahawks. The incident could have turned into a real tragedy, save for the fact that Cass ordered troops to seize Campo's warehouse and keep the Indians at, at bay by bayonets. Other area traders helped in defusing the situation. In 1823, Louis Campo moved from Saginaw and went west uh, along the banks of the Grand River, also in Michigan, and he set up an all-new trading post on a 72-acre parcel, which he purchased for $90. And it was here that he founded Grand Rapids. So a little historical background on the Saginaw, Michigan area. area. Um, a fascinating chapter in history. It, as I walk down Court Street, and I, and I do weekly pass the location where the fort was originally built, it would be so cool to be able to not transcend time back because I wouldn't want to go back to that era. But to just peel it back like, or open it like the page of a book and be able to view what transpired there. Fascinating times. Well, thank you for listening and watching. And if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming programs on what has become my very favorite YouTube channel of the Dennis Morrison channel. Hey, God bless and take care.